Hi, I wanted to summarize some of the uh, material from uh, today, the 15th of July. So um, this isn't the order we talked about it in class, but uh, we've talked. We were talking a lot about dopamine signaling, uh, and in terms of dopamine signaling, there are two places in the brain where ner cell bodies exist that produce dopamine and that are releasing dopamine out of their axons. Um, those are the substantia nigra, um, specifically the substantia nigra pars compacta. That's what the LC stands for, but we're mostly just going to talk about as the substantia nigra. Um, you can ignore that little c. Um, and then the ventral tegmental area. Um, the cells in the substantia nigra send their axons to the striatum, which is um, part of the basal ganglia. That's the only uh, part aside from the substantia nigra that you're going to need to know this semester. Um, and the effect of dopamine being released from the substantia nigra to the um, striatum is to enhance movement. We'll get back in a minute to how that happens. Um, there are two different things that go on, both of which increase movement. The second uh, area that produces dopamine is the ventral tegmental area, and it makes two projections. One is that a lot of its axons go to the nucleus accumbens. This is um, an area in the brain um, where dopamine release promotes feelings of pleasure. Um, and then the other is to the frontal lobes, um, where dopamine enhances attention. When we talk about ADHD, that's something that's going to come up quite a bit. Um, we talked about um, drugs that alter dopamine. In particular, Ritalin and cocaine both do block dopamine transporters. Um, that means that um, dopamine removal from synaptic clefts, so um, as dopamine is released, it gets removed from synaptic spaces. Um, and uh, dopamine removal from the synaptic spaces um, causes, uh, um, uh, so removal of dopamine, uh, it goes on every time it's released. Ritalin and cocaine by blocking the transporters mean that um, it takes longer for whatever transporters are not blocked to remove. Um, Ritalin, it turns out, is more effective at enhancing dopamine in the frontal lobes. Um, cocaine is more effective at enhancing dopamine in the nucleus accumbens, the pleasure center. Um, amphetamine um, actually doesn't just block the transporter, it reverses the transporter, so instead of sucking dopamine out, that same protein squirts dopamine into the synapse. Um, and, so the, and that happens all over the brain, so it can both cause pleasure and urges to move and enhance attention. Um, we then discussed, in particular, uh, the two different types of dopamine receptors. The first are the D1 type dopamine receptor. These are metabotropic, which generally means that they are slow and have very complicated effects. Um, that they're G protein coupled. That's a term that you don't need to know for this class, but if you've ever taken another bio class, um, this neurobiologist say metabotropic, the same time cell biologists mean say G protein coupled. Um, it does a lot of different things, but one of the things that it does is activates sodium channels, and that makes D1 receptors excitatory. So when dopamine is released and the receiving cell has a D1 receptor, that signal is going to excite the receiving cell. By contrast, there are also dopamine, the same type of dopamine release can happen with a receiving cell that has a D2 type receptor. These are also metabotropic, and in this case, they do a lot of things. It's not just turning on channels, but the, the, the most relevant for what we're going to be spending our time thinking about this uh, in this semester is activating potassium channels. And so then potassium flows out, hyperpolarizing the cell, making it inhibitory. Um, then we get to, so remember now that the cortex has glutamate releasing synapses that's going to be excitatory in both cases onto the striatum. When <coughs> some of the cells project directly, pretty directly back to the motor cortex, and when those cells are firing action potentials, that excites the motor cortex. Um, and then there are other cells that have a more indirect projection back to the motor cortex, and when they are firing action potentials, they inhibit movement. The substantia nigra releases dopamine onto both of these cells. The direct projecting cells have D1 receptors. What that means is that when the direct projecting cells get dopamine, they get excited by dopamine, they fire more action potentials, and then you turn on movement. The indirect projecting cells have D2 type dopamine receptors. So dopamine release here inhibits these cells. They fire less. That means less inhibition of motor cortex, which means, again, more movement. So the net effect of dopamine um, in both pathways 
is that it promotes movement. And so that's why we say that dopamine promotes movement overall. Um, it directly promotes movement by exciting the go pathway, the direct projecting movement and it pathway, and it also promotes movement by turning down the inhibitors, the indirect pathway. In Parkinson's disease, the substantia nigra cells die, and that means there's less dopamine overall in the striatum and makes it harder to move, especially to start initiating movements. Um, we'll return to this a little bit when we talk about Tourette's syndrome, um, and also, again, a few more times throughout the semester.